Okay, so I've been watching this show called The Patient. Okay, first of all, if you've not watched it yet, watch it first. Watch episode one first before you watch this video because I'm about to ruin things. Um, so this show, it, you can watch it on Hulu. Um, the trouble is, I think Hulu is only available in the US, Japan, and Puerto Rico. So some of you, I don't know, maybe if you had a VPN, but then you would have to get a Hulu subscription. It's a whole thing. So I don't know if some of you will um, even be able to watch it. So um, <clears throat> <sighs> so I've been, so I recorded, I've been recording, I'm actually on episode six. Okay. <laughs> so I've been recording my reactions to each episode, but I've just been kind of holding on to them because I, uh, um, I'm pretty sure that, I'm sorry, my camera cut off and I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> so, um, if you're unable to watch it and you wanted to watch it, um, there will be a link in the description below where you can see the episode with my face in the way, of course. So you can just click on the link, you can go watch it, and then you can come back to this video if you're interested in anything I had to say about it. <laughs> So, um, and I, th so I think that's how I will probably do it. I'll probably put the episodes and then the review can be on YouTube. Uh, that way I can, um, still run ads. So, uh, episode one, first of all, I want to let you know, right at this moment, at the moment of this recording, um, there are six episodes out so far. I did not know until episode six, it was after seeing episode six, that I figured out Steve Carell is, um, plays the doctor in this show. And I didn't know this whole time. I love Steve Carell, by the way. I don't, I don't know anything about his personal life, but I'm just saying, I, as an actor, I, I like him. So, um, very, I did, but I just didn't know this was him. But I did know, I was like, hold on, I'm just kind of rambling here. <laughs> I knew there was something very familiar about him, him. I couldn't pinpoint his, was it his face? Was it his voice? I don't know, but there was something very warm and inviting about him, his character. But I just didn't figure out it was him until episode six. So Steve Carell man and now that I know it's Steve Carell I'm actually even more impressed I love it even more so anyway so I said this in the other video but just in case I'm gonna say it again sometimes when I watch shows I like to um, pick out a character usually the main character I just like to pretend that I'm that character and think about like what kind of choices would I make? Would I make the same choices they're making or would I make different choices? And if I made different choices, how do I think that those choices would have played out? It's a whole thing that I like to do. Um, of course, in this case, I am going to be, I, my character is the doctor. So you really have two main characters. You have the doctor and you have the patient. Um, and I think most of us would, uh, if we were going to be one or the other, I think most of us would find ourselves being the doctor. So that's my character. Um, okay, so it starts out, so we're starting out with, um, so you have a man who's sort of waking up in his bed, he's putting on his glasses, he's kind of looking around, um, you know, just kind of like. I don't know, like there's a potential that, okay, so first he's just getting up and he goes to, he goes to walk across the room and suddenly finds that he's chained to the floor. So immediately the first thing you're getting is panic, absolute panic. And, um, so the first thing he's doing is he's just like clawing at this chain. He's trying to get this chain off his ankle. He's trying to figure out where he is, what's happened. He obviously doesn't 
know how he got there or he doesn't seem to know how he got there. And then he has a full on panic and he screams. And I'm telling you, when he starts screaming, I start getting really afraid because I'm like, please stop screaming. I wouldn't be, I actually don't know what I would be doing in real life. Maybe I would be screaming, but I just felt like, please don't scream, don't scream, please. Whoever has chained you here, don't get their attention. Like just, I don't, I would rather be chained in this room forever than to ever have whoever put me here come back into this room. That's just kind of my mindset at the moment. And all I can think about is how to get this chain off. And he's thinking that as well because he's like digging at the at the lock. He's digging at the 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 clasp around his ankle, the cuff, I guess. I don't know what to call things. Um, and I'm immediately already thinking, I think I would, if I could just get a pocket knife or something, a pocket knife and a lighter, I'll be sawing my foot off. I will be slowly sawing my foot off, burning the ends, sawing it, burning the ends. And I will do that till I get out. I feel 100% sure that I will do that. <clears throat> I will risk. I would risk. I don't know. Maybe. Mm, no, it's not good. Anybody that has you chained to the floor, it's not good. But needless to say, he obviously doesn't have a knife or a lighter or anything. <sighs> so he's there. Then you have some flashbacks of his former life. Um, it appears that he's a family man and it appears that he is a, um, some kind of psychologist or therapist or something like that. Um, helps people with their mental problems. Um, it seems like uh at this point so 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 he has memories of his family he's got a wife he's got a daughter he has he's got a son um you're already getting kind of a down feeling just by the voicemail he leaves his daughter uh his tone was a little down he he just sounded a little i don't know how to describe it but you could already sense that there is some sadness in him. You can sense it in the way he brushes his teeth, the way he puts cream on his foot, the way he walks around, the way he leaves the voicemail to his daughter. Everything has an air of depression and sadness. So he's having these memories. At some point, I forget exactly the order. At some point, he even has a dream about his wife and in, in, in the dream, his wife is in the bed, and but she's clearly dead. And she's holding what at first I thought was a violin, but it turns out it was a guitar. <laughs> I don't know how to recognize instruments, apparently. Um, and then in this dream, he there's a baby crying, and he gets up to go check in the... And inside the bassinet is a baby with an extremely weird morphed out face. Looks like a mask, but some kind of some kind of something going on with the face then he wakes up this is when he's still at home by the way this is a memory from home from his real life in his real bed he has this nightmare he wakes up he looks sad this is the first time i realized that something has happened to his wife and that his wife is probably dead uh, and of course he just cuddles up with the pillow just looking sad now at this point, I think that maybe his wife has died from, died in childbirth. Now they are an older couple. It looks like their children are grown, but it's not unheard of for a woman to find herself pregnant in her, her older age. You know, it's possible. And so I'm thinking at this point, perhaps she has died giving birth to this child. Perhaps they both died uh, during this process. I'm not so I'm not sure. So anyway, those are just flashbacks. But then we come back to the present and he's chained and he's in this bed. So, okay, so he's chained to the floor and the chain is uh, so long. I, I don't know how long it is, obviously. So the chain is like X length. So he can only get so far around the room. He can get to his bed. He can get to a chair, I think. Uh, he can't get to the bathroom though it's just 
it's almost long enough to get to the bathroom, but he can't get to the bathroom. It's almost long enough to get to the sliding glass doors that lead outside because he's in, he's in some kind of basement with sliding glass doors that lead to the outside. And he's just out of reach of those doors as well. And um, what he does have instead of a bathroom, he has a, a little urinal, some toilet paper kept by the bed. I guess that's there for him if he needs to use the bathroom. Interestingly enough, also his prescription heart medication is there on the bedside table. His foot cream that he uses every night, his toothbrush, those things are there in the room for him within his reach. Okay, that's just the setup of the basement. Um, I'm sorry. So now let's go back to the present and uh, he wakes up and he can hear somebody in the bathroom peeing. And during this moment, like I'm having panic, like I don't know what to do. I know the person is, I know the abductor is here. He's down here. And honestly, my thought was to just like get under the bed, even though I know it makes no sense. Like, I know it makes no sense because you're chained. You will be found. But that's just like the overwhelming urge, like just to not <laughs> to just not be seen and get under the bed and hide. That's honestly what I wanted to do. That's not what he did. Of course, it wouldn't have done him any good anyways. So. Of course, out comes one of his patients, uh, Jean, who is actually named Sam. Now, I'm going to tell you all the things that terrified me of this episode. First of all, it's not... So, they did flashbacks of different patients he had been seeing. But you couldn't... Jean would have been the obvious suspect of who would have abducted him. But... You couldn't know that for sure, but now we do know for sure that it was Jean. And here are the things that are scary. So Jean, who is actually Sam, this was all planned out because he didn't use his real name um, when he registered uh, as a patient. I do recall at the beginning that um, he would never leave in for contact information for himself. He always said, well, I'll call you back. I'm, I'm a hard man to reach, blah, 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 blah. So we don't have any contact information for Gene on file, uh, as in the doctor. The doctor doesn't have anything on file that is actually, that will actually link people to Gene or to Sam. So that's already the first thing that's scary. The, sec the second thing that's scary is when he, okay, First of all, let's let's rewind a little bit when to a flashback when Jean, Sam, I'm sorry, Sam and uh, I just call him Jean because he's referred to as Jean throughout this entire episode. It's not until the end of the episode that he becomes Sam. So at this mo at this moment, we're still thinking of him as Jean. So. So there is a point in which. Um, you know, so Gene is coming in for this therapy, but and he talks about abuse from his father, but he doesn't ever be specific. He's very vague about it. He doesn't want to go into details, and it seems like he mostly, when he comes, he just enjoys talking with the doctor about things he likes, like, uh, as the doctor pointed out, he likes to talk about, you know, songs that he likes, um, uh, just other things, other things other than what his problem is. And the doctor kind of points that out to him. And I remember in the moment that he tells Gene, you know, you're not really opening up to me. This isn't really going anywhere. I'm a little frustrated by this process. And I assume that you are as well. I was already feeling panic when he said that because I don't know. I feel like whenever you're dealing with someone like that, I, I don't know. I'm always careful with how I word things or I try to be careful with how I word things. Although there's, um, uh, there's, um, sorry, I got a text and <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Sometimes you, there's just things that you cannot say right. Um, 
I don't know, but there was something about that that made me, even in the moment, I was like, ooh, that didn't feel good. I feel like you could even tell in Jean's face that it, I feel like it was going to go where it went anyway, but I think that comment really um, helped it to go that way. So anyway... We find out it's Jean, and we find out that Jean's name is Sam, and we find out that Sam has a compulsion to kill people. Sam is a serial killer, um, and of course, the doctor is just, uh, I can't remember the doctor's name right now, Dr. Sh I don't remember, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm just going to call him the doctor. So, so he's telling the doctor about his compulsion to kill. And of course, the doctor's just freaking out. He's just, it's like he's freaking out, but he's trying not to freak out, I guess. Something I want to say, though. Okay, I'll get back to that. So here's the serial killer. So here's Sam telling him, I... I have a compulsion to kill people and I do kill people and he's and the doctor's trying to convince him look okay now that I know the truth unlock this chain let me out of here we'll meet in my office blah 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 and Sam's like no that's not gonna work you said so yourself it's not working there and he's like no 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 I know the truth now it's gonna be fine it's gonna work and he's like no you'll have to tell the police and he's like no 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 I don't have to tell the police because this is confidential this is patient doctor and he's like unless you tell me that you are going to commit another crime I don't have to tell the police and then of course Sam is like I'm going to commit another crime and I'm just like no because that statement that statement right there is the statement that lets you know that's his way of telling you, you're not, I'm not letting you go. Like, you're not getting out of here. Like, that is such, now he's, now he's in a more dangerous situation than ever because Sam is making it, he doesn't want to let the doctor go. So that, that statement, that statement was terrifying for me and for the doctor because you could see it on his face. It was, oh, it was heartbreaking. It was, so I'm sorry, <laughs> my camera keeps cutting off. Every time my headphones come unplugged, the whole thing shuts down. So um, I'm gonna, just going to try to get through this. Um, so, oh, and also when Sam had first came down and came out of the bathroom, he's explaining to the doctor like, hey, I heard you screaming last night you're out in the woods nobody can hear you scream like calm down but I want to tell you so this is pretty much where we end at we end with the doctor stays chained up Sam's gonna come see him in the basement and try to work on his issues and um, this is all we know so far um, things that I did want to point out um, the screams the screams of the doctor are so good that sounds like I'm a disgusting person I just mean he did such a good job of sounding the screams sounded very real and they sounded very painful inside of me like I ugh. he is very good at displaying panic fear and terror and and the way his scream sounded I don't know they just sounded very real and they sounded very frightening so I'm just amazed at um, at his acting ability but that's where we end with episode one so uh, of course I'm actually on episode six now so I'm gonna not leave any spoilers for upcoming episodes um, <clears throat> so this is where we are at now so at this point at the end of episode one if I am the doctor the only plan I can think of if you're the doctor 
your only chance of survival at this point is to try to help this man. Try to help this man with his compulsion to kill. Um, and hope that you can, and, and hope that that is the one thing kind of keeping you just a little bit safer than everyone else that comes across his path. Is that he needs you for something. Ooh, and then when he talks about how he chose him. Oh, I went to three other Jew. I'm not sure what his um, affinity for Jewish doctors is, but he points out I, I, I visited three other Jewish doctors. I don't know if Sam is Jewish. I'm not sure. I visited three other Jewish doctors. You were the best. I chose you. When I heard those words, I chose you, I felt sick in my heart. I felt sick in my stomach because I would have just now gotten there. So but I would, that would be something I would think about planning on doing and, you know, until you actually start interacting with the environment and the people in the, the environment, you can't really know what's the best course, but so far getting on his good side as the doctor or as just a random abductee, I wouldn't know anything else to try at this moment other than just getting out of the chain. But at this point, there's nothing he can use to get out of the chain or to cut his foot off. <laughs> so um, that's where we end with this episode. So I recommend that you, hopefully you already watched it before you watch this video. Um, let me know what you guys thought in the comments. What, what do you think of this show and what would you do? First of all, who's your character? Are you the doctor or are you the patient? And let me know what are your decisions? What are your thoughts? What would you do if you were in this situation? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.